Here's a problem that I've never covered before. I've had this problem occasionally. Um, fairly rare. Fairly rare problem. But what we have here is a really badly torn up bridge seat. Uh, the bridge sheet is just part right here where the bridge sits. I'm going to move this up close to the camera for a second. All right, take a good look at that. Especially right here. What happened here? It's not my fault. <laughs> You're probably going, yeah, sure. But no, seriously, this was not my fault. This was the 70s, 73, 325, 326. So, yeah, 73. This is one of the ones that's in the um, six guitar triage thing that I just did. It gets a new bridge plate. Uh, the bridge has to be scooted back, etc. Typical 70s stuff. When I took the bridge off of this, I noticed immediately that it, somebody else had been in here because it was glued on with hide glue. And it should have been tight bond glue. I could tell it was high, high glue because when I was using a spatula to go in there, I'd pull it out and it'd be super sticky. In fact, it was so sticky that when I sat down on the bench like this, it stuck to the table. So I knew someone had been in here. Um, because it was high glue, I took extra care to use a lot of water and a lot of heat to really make that release cleanly. But as I was pulling that bridge off very carefully, and I always do this when I'm pulling a bridge, is look up underneath there to see what that wood is doing underneath. And most of them will just come off, you know, real clean. Maybe just a few small splinters. And I could see the wood grain tearing on this. And I thought, well, that ain't good, you know. It's grabbing on there. Sometimes you have run out. Run out is where the grain of the wood comes like this and comes up to the surface like this. And you'll catch that run out and it'll just shred the grain back. So, um, I've encountered that fairly common, you know. So, I always pay attention to which way this wood is tearing, if it's tearing, so that I can come in the other way and push the wood back down. Okay, long story short, I got the bridge off on this one, and man, it was torn up. I mean, there is flakes of wood coming off right here. You can see I'm getting my spatula into there. Going both directions. I thought, well, maybe not too bad, you know. I can glue them down again. But, golly, there's just wood loose everywhere on this thing. So, whoever took this bridge off before the first time, tore it up. Um... Maybe it was weak to begin with. Maybe it had a lot of run out there. So I started taking the bridge plate off and heat the bridge plate up. I've got a video on this, how to take the bridge plate off. Normally it takes me 15 minutes or so, you know. You pry on that bridge plate and you can see the glue releasing. As soon as I started prying on this thing, I could see the top going in. The top is caving in on it. So I stopped. Heated it up a lot more. Heated it up. I took a spatula. You know, and I'm working inside the guitar. So I had to reach up here like this and run the spatula up in that bridge plate, separate it. it. took me probably about an hour to get that bridge plate off. Using a lot of heat, using the spatula in there. I mean, I could see the top moving. It was getting ugly. I finally got the bridge plate off. And then when I did that, I could really see the extent of previous damage here because I didn't do this. First of all, there's a split happening right here in the top. Let me show you that. Let's get on this right here. But what was really bad about this, first of all, I think it's broken right here. Yeah. I'm going to move up to the camera again. I'm going to push on this top, and I want you to see how soft this thing is. Actually, let me just zoom in. I'm zoomed in now, so you can't see me anymore. I want you to watch the top deflection of this, see how soft it is. Push it right there, that's not too terrible. But watch this. Look at that. That thing is absolute mush right there. I'm barely putting any pressure at all on that. And you can see that top deflecting. Let's go out here. See, that's what it should look like. 
I'm pushing down pretty hard right here. I mean, I'm pushing hard. I'm flattening my thumb out. That's not budging. Watch. As we come up in here. And look at that. This top is just absolute mush. I don't know why. I don't know if it's weak grain right there. Um, it should not be weak out here. I, I took the bridge plate off. I didn't take any wood. You know, I didn't rip the wood up and I took it off. But when you get right back here behind the bridge, that is super soft. Should not be that soft right there. Soft right here. It's firming up because the X base runs right here. But this area right here is really, really soft. And I noticed when I took the bridge off that the top had a curve to it, a hump. It came like this and, and it dove. Had a hump back here. So, I think this might just be a very soft top. Reaching inside and then pushing up. And you can see the same thing. And this wood is just shattered in here. All right. Long story short on this thing. We have got to reinforce this area right here. Or when I put it... First of all, I can't get a bridge on there. This is... I've got to glue these things down and I've got to rebuild this bridge sheet here. And this whole thing here is going to be so soft that if I try to put a bridge on there, it's just going to cave in like that. Well, what about the bridge plate? You know, here's a bridge plate right here. It's not going to cover enough of it. And the other problem with the bridge plate is the way the grain runs on these things. The grain run on, on a bridge plate runs this way. So a bridge plate it flexes this direction fairly easy. I don't want to break this one. But it flexes in this direction. You see? Fairly easy. So if I put this on here like this, it's just going to want to curl. Now, I could make a bridge plate where the grain runs this direction. Uh, but that has its own problems. The best solution on this, the best long-term solution here, don't panic, is you put a spruce plate doubler on the top. And this is basically, essentially, a great big bridge plate. But you'll notice that the grain runs the same as the top does. So this is going to add a lot of stiffness in here. In fact, you know, see, I can barely flex it. So you might say, why don't you just put a big bridge plate in there? Well, the, we had a big bridge plate, but you're going to have to run the grain this direction. The other thing, the other problem with using a bridge plate this size, it's going to weigh a lot. When you use a piece of spruce like this, it weighs almost nothing. This weighs, this whole piece of spruce here, I bet weighs less than this bridge plate. And this is a super thin bridge plate. Yeah, that weighs almost nothing. Uh, that's why you use spruce on the top. It's light, and it also is very stiff when it goes against the grain, or with the grain like this. That's very stiff. It'll flex pretty good this way. But it's stiff this way. So I fixed these before. I fixed guitars like this that have caved in on the top. I fixed Roy's guitar. Roy, if you're watching this, Roy had a his dad's guitar, and somebody had epoxied on there. I mean, there were holes in the top. And on his guitar, I used one of these, and then I also cut out the spruce and I inlaid a brand new piece of spruce in there so that I could get a surface for the bridge. So there's two things we're talking about here, really. We've got a good surface for the bridge. This is not the bridge for this guitar, but this is a bridge. You've got to get a good surface for that glue. So I'm using the top to give you an example. This is a nice flat top here. See, that's wonderful. Everything is nice and tight, and you've got a great wood to wood surface right here. When it's all chewed up like this, you're not going to get a good wood to wood surface. So... If you glue this bridge on right here, it's horrible. Not going to work. So you could go in, and you could inlay little pieces of spruce, and you could build yourself a nice flat surface. But then the problem is, is you've got all these splinters of spruce that are glued down into other splinters of spruce. And how strong, really, is that? So if you go in and try to ride out the original top to get down to some clean spruce you're going to very significantly thin this thing and make it weak this top has nothing to thin it's, i mean it's on the verge of collapsing just like this so that's got to be strengthened
a bridge plate by itself is not going to do it because of the way the grain runs. And because if you try to put a big bridge plate in there, like this, it's going to weigh a ton. It's going to kill the sound. So the best solution overall is to take a piece of spruce like this. You put it on the inside and you essentially double the top in that area. This one's going to fit very precisely in between the X braces right here. Now you have to decide how much you want to go back on this, you know. It doesn't do any good to fill the entire top, you know. You wouldn't want to double the entire top. you still got to have some flex in this thing, um, you know. <laughs> Or are you just going to have a really dead top if you do that? The thing about spruce, though, you're also going to get the tone of the spruce. And this happens to be a piece of red spruce. It's going to go on the Sitka spruce top, so we're going to have a kind of a little bit of a red spruce sound on that. So that's good. Red spruce is really stiff, too, which is why I'm using it in this case. So what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to show you how I determine how much I want to put. Let me get my pen here. I'm going to put this plate in, and it's taking me about an hour to get a plate that I like. I had to make a tin plate, make another tin plate, cut this piece of spruce. I'm going to take my marker, and I'm going to mark the back end of the hole here. Because I know this bridge is going to have to be scooted about an eighth of an inch. So when I scoot it an eighth of an inch back, the holes are going to be in a slightly different location than they are right now. What I'm going to do is I want to put the holes where I want them, where they're going to end up. I didn't get that marked. Got this one marked, oh yeah. I'm trying not to get purple marker on the top, but pencil, I don't care. There we go. So I'm marking the rear of the hole right here. And I'm going to treat that as the front of the new hole because this bridge is going to scoot back about an eighth of an inch here. And that's going to be a mess too, on huh, its own. No, not too bad, really. It doesn't look too bad. Be able to get it. So your bridge is going to get scooted back about an eighth of an inch. Got to put it into a new location. So now I've got this mark right here. And here's my ruler. We're going to mark it across the top here. Of my wonderful little bridge plate doubler. A pencil mark tells me where this is going to go. Now I can line that up with the holes. So I'm going to line that up with the rear of the holes right there. And if you can see this, I'm going to have about that much in front of the bridge, so that's going to be a front leverage. If you stop right there, then you're just going to create a hole that it's going to dip in because it's pretty soft in the front. You know, that wood's broken right there, so we need to support it up in here a little bit too. So I'm going to do this. So I'm happy right there. I'm happy with the front of this. How much do I need to go into the back right here? One thing I could do is I could cut across right here so that inside the X-Brace just cuts across like a pre-war bridge pipe. But I got to ask myself, do I really want to do that or not? So, so far, this, you know, if you're going to put this piece of spruce in there, it should do its job. So we're going to stop right here currently. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to Pick my finger right there, and I'm going to come up here and start pushing. And see, it's still soft right there. It is very, very soft. All the way back to there. From here, it's pretty good. I'm not going to cut this too much. I don't think I'm going to cut it at all. I think I'm just going to put it in like this. When you do these things, it's important to bevel the back edges. Bevel the edges. Pretty firm. Because you don't want to cause a stress riser out right here. Um, if you put this edge over here, for instance, it would cause a stress riser where the stress goes boom like this. And it would create a crease right here. You don't want to do that. You want to bevel that edge pretty hard. It could even be beveled more than this. And I might go back and bevel it some more. I might put a secondary bevel in it. So it goes from this bevel. And I might go to a more shallow bevel even right here. So that, you know, almost a curve.
almost like a curve, so that the stress has a chance to dissipate. Uh, the front has that on there too. And there's going to be our doublet. And I think I'm just going to use this full size because um, this top is pretty compromised and we have a chance to save it now before it gets a big hole in it. So I'm going to glue this in. I'm going to use fish glue and glue it in. And honestly, this looks huge, doesn't it? I can see the marks in here from the old Indian rosewood bridge plate that I just pulled out. And this is barely bigger than the Indian rosewood bridge plate that was in it. So we are basically replacing a huge, heavy, dull sounding Indian rosewood bridge plate with this very lightweight, stiff piece of spruce. And then I'm going to put a small bridge plate on top of it. And because I've got this stiff piece of spruce, I'm going to be able to use a, uh, a pretty small bridge plate on this, you know. There's no reason to even attempt to use the bridge plate to stiffen the top because that's what this is going to do. And so this is going to go on and it'll fit right there. So that's about the size of the bridge plate we're going to have on top of that. So you can see the spruce really, this is how much it's going to add to it because it's not going to do anything inside here. You know, your, your bridge plate is going to be your main... Um, tone killing factor <laughs> if you want to call that but i can get by with a small bridge plate super small bridge plate one that barely covers the bridge which this one does here's what this one looks like on top of the bridge and it was sticking out about 16th of an inch right there you know eighth of an inch maybe um i don't think i'm going to go any smaller than my standard plate but i'm going to bevel the edges on it pretty hard so we're going to have a system that looks like this And this also shows you how much sticks out in front of the bridge, which is a nice thing to see. And you can see my bevel cuts off right about the edge of that. So this, in other words, this bevel comes almost to the edge of that. And then this is going to be our strengthening area back in here. So that's about inch and a half, inch and a quarter, really. Inch and a quarter back from here. And I'm confident, I'm pretty confident that'll do it. Ah, oh, that's an ugly situation. You got to be real careful when you take bridges off that that doesn't happen. The guy probably didn't heat it enough. Um, I'm pretty aggressive on the heat because I want that, I want to not do this, you know. I want that glue to destroy. I feel like whoever did this probably should have spent a little bit more time gluing these down. Maybe he did. Maybe he used hide glue to do that. And then when you heat it again, then it comes apart again. I talked to um, Jim Baggett, Mass Street Music. Uh, Jim is like one of the best pre-war Martin guitar repairmen that there is. That's pretty much, I think, all he works on is 1930s <laughs> and 40s uh, Martin guitars. And he is precise. He does not have to make a living repairing guitars. He doesn't have to repair guitars at all. So he takes all the time that he needs. And, I mean, he might take a year, two years to do a neck reset. Because he's just that way, you know. So he had a conversation with me one time about this. And he was asking me if I thought that he had like one splinter he needed to fill. And he didn't want this problem to occur if somebody ever took it apart. He wanted to know if super glue under there, what I thought about the super glue. Put super glue under the splinter, glue the splinter down, and then hide glue on top of that. So that hopefully if the bridge ever had to come off again, the super glue would hold better than the hide glue. And I said, well, you're asking me? <laughs> and, uh, and Jim said, you know, if a guy thinks he knows too much to ask someone else for their opinion, then he probably doesn't know very much at all. And I thought, well, that was cool, you know. And I said, yeah, I think, you know, super glue would probably be your best bet, really, for trying to keep it on there. But who knows if that super glue is going to be able to resist the actual heat, you know. Um, you're not really going to know until the next guy tries to take it apart. But I do think that using super glue 
maybe epoxy. Although neither one of us really like the idea of using epoxy on a pre-war Martin guitar. Um, I don't know what he ended up doing, but the point is, is this is a fairly common problem on vintage guitars, is rebuilding the bridge sheet here. So, I'm going to have to use that spruce double under there, and it's not going to hurt it. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to sound pretty good, because I'm going to be um, scalloping the braces, and I'm going to be doing some stuff like that. So, I'm going to be able to scallop to this bridge plate. Um, I'm going to have a hot rosewood bridge plate on there. I don't think it's going to hurt it. I, I've done it this three or four times, probably. Four or five times, maybe. And most of them were worse than this. Most of them were caved through. Um, at least two of those turned out to be really, really good guitars. And I think maybe also adding the stiffness into this area translates the sound of the back of the guitar a little bit more. Uh, makes the whole top flap a little bit more. Instead of instead of having a soft, weak spot right here where all the sound is focused here, using something like that that's still spruce and still light, still stiff, transfers that energy back into here. Uh, just my guess on that. But the guitars that I've done that to sounded great. Um, you know, maybe Roy can vouch for us. Maybe Roy's guitar has blown up since then. He didn't want to say anything. But I've seen worse than this, but this is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to put that bridge plate double on there. And then I'm going to have to come in once it's in and I've got something to work against. Then I'll come in and I'll glue all these down. Might use super glue. <laughs> Get those all nice and flush. Um, yeah, that one's busted right there. That's terrible. I'll have to get that as strong as I can. Put some extra spruce in there. I'll have to reconsider on this as to what I'm going to do. I might possibly make a very, very thin. Now it's not going to work, you know. I could put a very, very thin piece of spruce over the top of this. But if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to have to route because I'm going to have to make a perfectly good wood to wood surface on here. It's not going to do any good to put a piece of spruce on top of this chewed up seat. I might as well just put the bridge on there, you see, because then you're going to create a weak surface there. And yeah, you're going to get the bridge glued to the top of it. But if the bottom of it is all corroded and corrupted and, um, uh, let's well, corrupted, you know, I'm thinking of something that's, um, moldy almost, uh, then then the bottom is just going to come off of it. So you've got to have, if you're going to try to fill this in and everything, you've got to have a very good wood-to-wood -wood seat. And my inclination is probably just to work with this too, as much as I can, fill in the splinters, sand it, smooth it, get everything the best I can get before I glue the bridge on. One thing I have done when I have things that have, like if you look at this, for instance... Okay, look at the corrugation right here. There's little pieces of spruce that are just pulled out right here. There's not chunks like this one. This is bad. I mean, man, that thing, you know, that's going to glue down, okay? But there's pieces of, you know, missing a piece right there. And there's just all these little striations right here that you're never going to be able to fill. You're going to be using microscopic splinters trying to fill that in. But one thing I have done, it seems to work pretty good. When I'm ready to glue the bridge on, I get a piece of spruce and shave it. And you can even do it with the bottom of the bridge. It's just as long as you get really super fine dust. So I'll take this, take a bridge. Um, where's my razor blade? I don't have a razor blade here, but I'll use a razor blade and, and, and scrape it to get a nice clean surface on it. You got to get rid of the oxidation on this thing before you glue it down. So I'll scrape all that over here. I've got a clean razor blade. I'm scraping. So I'm getting pure wood dust down in there. And then what I'll do is I'll take that razor blade, that utility razor blade, and draw it across here like this and sift the dust down into the cracks. Then I put my glue on the bridge and I put a little bit of extra glue. So... Normally, when I glue a bridge down, I use as little glue as I can, make it really smear. But in this case, I use a little bit of extra glue, 
so there's it's going to squish okay got all that dust level down there and clamp it down on there and squish it and squish the glue into the dust that i just put on there and it creates a dust um a wood putty it creates a dust and glue matrix putty that is not super strong it's not as good as if you could get the wood straight down on there but it's way better in my opinion and this is a furniture maker's trick too which i read up on it to see how good it would be um, and you're going to actually glue all that wood dust together and the fresh glue is holding it on there it's not bad i have tried taking bridges off like that after i've done that and they were stuck on pretty good it's one of those things where what are you going to do? You know, you can't get really nice wood-to-wood -wood surface on here unless you ride it. And then when you ride it, you're thinning the top down again. You don't want to just stick a piece of spruce down on there because if you don't get a good surface here, you're wasting your time. So you've got to think of what you are gonna what you can do. You don't want to use epoxy on it because epoxy shifts, does all this thing. Epoxy will fill gaps, but it'll also heat up and shift. So that's not a good glue for epoxy. So what you're doing is you're making a, is you're filling the glue with wood, and that will glue itself together, and you've made yourself a little wood putty. Um, not bad, you know, uh, especially with fish glue, or uh, you know, glue that will form into that dust and really get in there. It's not your best solution, but it's better than the alternatives. It's better than just using glue. It's better than trying than not doing anything. And it worked pretty good for me so far. That's all I can say. So you're when you're doing repair work, you don't always get what you want. <laughs> you get what you need. <laughs> you have gotta deal with situations like this. I would never um, people, oh, hot hide glue. No, hot hide glue does not fill gaps at all. Fish glue fills gaps better than hot hide glue. And the problem with hot hide glue is that it cools. And when it cools, that's it. It's done. Fish glue is a cold glue, so it's designed to give you some working time. And so that's why it'll work to go into those, into that dust, because it gives you a lot of working time, lets you squish everything together and then it's going to cure as a cold glue and tight bond glue would work i don't use tight bond glue but the luthier's mercantile glue would work pretty good for that um, any kind of strong glue that gives you a fairly good working time will work pretty good as a um, a dust putty I, there's a technical name for this for this technique but anyway i don't rely on it but it will definitely help you in these little areas like there with those little striations where you're stuck. You know, you haven't got a big chunk of wood that you can fill in here. So, all right. So that's an interesting problem on this guitar. And it's too bad because this is the one, this is one of the ones I said, ah, this shouldn't be too much trouble. Yeah. And man, it's been the worst one so far. So, because someone else had been there, there before me, I made a real mess out of it. So we're going to have to fix that up. Uh, we're going to have to fix the top up. Got a little bit of a crack happening right here, but that's not a big deal. I can I can uh, glue that up very, very easily. And I, I stopped that before, I was, before it got any worse. I saw what was happening on it and shifted gears immediately to where I was using the spatula, pushing there and loosen the bridge plate. And even then, man, it was, it was tough. I've been working on this thing since, um, what time is it now? I think it's about 10 o'clock. About 11 o'clock. I've been working on this since 7 o'clock this morning. Four hours on this. So, it's so what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put this video out so I can show the owner what I'm going to do before I'm going to glue it in there. But we really don't have a choice here. We have got to strengthen this. This is the best way to do it is with this spruce plate. Stiffen that top up. Stiffening the top is going to make it brighter and snappier. Um... Not a bad thing here. This is not a bridge plate. Again, you know, this is spruce. It's light. 
<laughs> Josh, a red spruce. You're going to get a little bit of a red spruce snap to it. So let's get this done. Get this video out here. I just want to show you this this problem that I don't think I've ever videoed. It's fairly rare, you know. It's a fairly rare problem. Um, I've got the bridge plate out, though, so that's nice. And we're going to get this top nice and flat, get everything straightened out, take care of that. And I'm 100% confident it's going to be it's going to be good. All right, see ya.